Hi everyone. You know, I got these looms about a year back and ever since then I've um, always been thinking of some of these patterns that I always wanted to try. You know, one of them is a cardigan, you know, with raglan sleeves, you know. I love raglan sleeves and the way it drapes on you, you know. The whole cardigan when you have raglan sleeves or even a sweater the way it drapes it's very beautiful you know it's because of the way that it's constructed that's why it looks very very nice and i saw this yarn you know there's this chinese shops around here lots of them and you can buy all this uh, yarn it's all a acrylic but they have fabulous colors you know look at this one this one reminds me so much of native american or aztec um colors you know you know they are clothing the tp and and um, they have got this kind of uh, wonderful combination of colors and i've always wanted to have a cardigan with this kind of shades you know and um, so now that i started uh, trying out these looms i i got these looms about a year back and i've been experimenting with different different um designs and stuff and i came across quite a few of these sweaters and also cardigans but then the measurements don't really work with the loom you see and so um even though i'd like to show you what those patterns are i will probably get sued because you know i can't really just take somebody else's uh, patterns and then uh, just use it as my own so what i've done is i've adapted the pattern this yarn uses uh, 5 to 6 mm um hook or knitting needle which is very good for this these looms you know this one and also the pink one this one has 62 pegs now it makes you, this one can do a width of uh, 22 whereas the pink one which i used to make the v neck cardigan for youtube the other one that i have put up you know that one used the pink loom because i was only getting a width of 18 for that you know this one however gives you a larger width and for this cardigan the raglan cardigan i will need a width of uh, 20 inches you know so i would have to use this and i will use 56 pegs not all the 62 pegs 56 pegs now um When I'm showing you this video, I will not be repeating all the steps that I have done. Like for instance, the cast on, cast off, uh, also the decrease, and uh, I will not show you any of these things because they have already been shown in the other video, and I don't want to repeat myself. So, if you want, you can check out that video. It's called Women's V Neck Cardigan. If it's on my channel, if you don't want to watch my video you can always search the numerous other loom knitting videos that will show you how to cast on cast off and decrease stitching uh, stitches on a loom now the first thing that you'll be doing is a back the back is about 20 inches and it will have a straight bit of 6 inches here 6 inches and then you'll have to do a reduction of 20 inches now when you do this it comes up to about 6 and a half inches so you're reducing it to 18 pegs from 56 so that's a reduction of approximately 38 pegs now 38 pegs you're reducing from 80 from 56 to 18 so you're reducing 38 pegs if you want to reduce 38 pegs you have to do it gradually otherwise the angle will be so acute and it will look quite ghastly you know so you can't do that you have to do a very gradual decrease and um, i'll come back and i will share with you once i start doing it i'll have an idea um how much i'll calculate and put it later and the length that you have to work on is 26 um 26 inches the front has the same slope of 20 However the width the initial width is 10 and a half and the width that you end up with is 3 and a half. Of course the length is the same 26 you know. Here the width changes differently. This sleeve joins here and here. That's how you join a raglan sleeve you know. It's a very very interesting looking sleeve you know. Lovely looking uh, design. I'm very very um attracted to the raglan the whole construction of it is very interesting. And of course this is the sleeve the raglan sleeve. It has got the 20 inch which is the part that you'll be joining to the front and to the back. And the rest of it is of course the length of the sleeve. The length of the sleeve itself is 24 inches. Now the reason this sleeve is so long is because it comes from the shoulder not sorry from the neck not from the shoulder. 
that's why this the sleeve is longer than normal and um, uh, we'll go along and hopefully you will be, you and I will come up with a lovely beautiful looking raglan cardigan that we will be happy to use I hope my adapted uh, cardigan will work now I remember uh, remember we I told you that we'd be back when we had done six inches on the loom six inches let's just measure this yes we had six inches yeah six inches so now at six inches according to the diagram can you see the back okay we're doing the back huh are we able to see anything or not ah okay now the back we're supposed to go at six inches you have to start your reduction so you have to reduce for 20 inches you have to reduce it until it becomes 18 pegs from 56 to 18 that's 38 peg reduction which makes it 19 on this side and 19 on this side because 38 divided by 2 is 19 and you have to slope it gradually you cannot do an abrupt reduction uh, reduction so the first decrease you do at the sixth inch point and then you do one for every inch until you arrive at 26 inches and six and a half inch with 18 pegs remaining remaining on the loom now the the this one uh, would give you every four rows should give you about one inch so what you do to decrease the stitches is you lift this this stitch here and you put it onto this peg and then you use uh, you you knit it off together that will be your first reduction and you do that for every four rows you do a reduction until you have reduced all 38 pegs and you're left only with 18 that will finish the back for you now i just thought i'd better show you exactly how to do the first decrease and then after that you just go ahead and do the decrease by yourself okay now i'm doing the first decrease then this has to be done on both sides huh? You can see that no so what you do is the first decrease you lift it one and put over the other so it becomes two stitches on one then you continue to knit it normally I hope you got that I wanted to explain something else you know the inclination that you have here and here and this because the in this pattern what is going to happen is that you are going to be joining this part of the sleeve this part of the sleeve to the back and this part of the sleeve to the front you know so what happens is that they have these inclinations have to match you know this all these have to match so when you're doing the decreases make sure you're constant however you want to do it is it every five rows or four rows but make sure that you do it at a constant pace because you can't like for instance here you'll be reducing from 30 to 10 that would be a 20 stitch de reduction but here was a 19 stitch deduction reduction so if you're going to do it after every four rows and if you find that when you're reaching towards the top there is too much space then you do it every five rows so that you can still have the incline going you know otherwise you will have a one point of it where you're not doing any decreases you must always try as much as possible to e evenly space out the reduction so if if you find that it is every five rows then you do it every five rows depending on how tightly or loosely you knit you know on the loom so make sure that you're constant constant and consistent with your decreases just wanted to point out an easy way for you to keep track of your decreases you put a marker you know on the first decrease here's my first decrease I've done as you can notice it's my first decrease because this stitch first decrease you know and I have put markers on one there it's a yellow marker I know it's almost the same color as the yarn and then this is the other marker here so if you were to lose track when you come back 
and you're working on your on your um, stitches you can easily see by looking at the side where is it that you placed your marker that that was where you started your decreases so that you know just in case you want to measure and be certain that you haven't missed any of the decreases this is one other way of keeping track of your decreases I think this is called the magic knot I'm just joining another strand to the because my my yarn finished so I found this method to be quite good you know you go under over make a knot do the same thing here under over make a knot and then you test this knot don't do this with wool eh? if you pull too tight the wool will snap you know but this is acrylic you know so pretty strong stuff and actually with this one you can either weave in these ends and this knot is but I suggest you don't do that because I don't think that because if you pull it the other direction it will actually you see it comes apart but in this direction it won't you see so usually in the video if you look up magic knot I think it's called the person actually cuts it so close that's kind of frightening actually I do it about here and there's my knot actually sometimes when you come across these um, yarns that you buy and there's a knot in between I mean the cheaper yarns usually have this they have a knot in between the thread and you'll come across a knot like this you know but then it cut a little more closely you know it's hardly noticeable when you use something like this I am as usual I'm terribly lazy you know so I always find different ways to cut short the amount of work I'm doing anyway I wanted to show you something um, as I was doing now <coughs> I'm halfway through one of my I just finished one uh, decrease here now keep a record is my suggestion after the first first decrease that you do you write down how many rows you do I've done first decrease I did five rows and then I alternated and did a four you know keep a record if you intend to change the number of rows that you are doing the decreases you know because then you repeat this when you do for the sleeve and the front and left front and right front now the thing I wanted to say was that see because this was done at the sixth inch this should be seven and this should be eight but when I took a measurement of my finished piece so far it's actually nine inches so because it's nine inches that means my calculation of every four or five rows was too much <clears throat> I think the five rows was too much so I'm going to change it and try and do every four rows now and I'm going to try to be constant you know because if I find that whatever you you do here like for instance you've done I've done five rows and then four it's all right if you as long as you follow the same um, number of rows for the increases so for the decreases that you do for the sleeve and for the left front and right front what you need to do is that you need to write down and don't be lazy you know after you finish and don't think that you've got a good enough memory that you're going to remember so every time that you've done a, a row write it down mark it down as one or if you want to do one of those you know the ones that people do in prison you know you know one of those where they they they, they do one two three four and then they put a line across you know I believe they do this they used to do this in prison I think I think it was in the bird man of Alcatraz anyway whatever the 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 method that you're going to be doing always be constant and always don't be lazy write down immediately you know and don't think that after I finish this row when I go back I will write down two you know don't do that write it immediately when you finish the row you know and um, see I've done the marks here this is the one that I've just done as you can see I've just done this here I've marked it then this is the one before that this is the one before that this is the one now here this is the one before that and this was the first one that I did where is it ah sorry this is the one before that okay 
one then there's one here and then this is the first one that I did now I think I mentioned before about being careful when you're doing these um, decreases on your left and right fronts you know because you might make a mistake and duplicate the left and the right front decreases resulting on them being on the same side the way to avoid this is now what you do is in this case it's quite simple you see because <coughs> you cast 30 for the left front and right you'll be casting 30 stitches so what you do is you do the first decrease from here you start them here and you work themselves down and the other one when you do the other side you do it on this side the decreases you know so this way you will get matching sides but they are not duplicated the decreases now earlier you remember when I started the decreases um, I had done the first decrease after five rows because I wasn't sure how much one inch was how many rows it was so I was experimenting and I had done it after five rows then I did it after four and four then to balance out the five that I done here I did it after three rows here now when you do the left and the right front you have to be consistent as I mentioned before make sure that when you do your left and right front decreases that you start off after five rows and then four four and then three and you follow this all the way down of course if you don't make this mistake and you're doing them after every four rows you don't have to really follow what i'm saying here but i'm saying this only because it will depend on how you knit how loosely or tightly you knit and therefore your stitches you know if you are also experimenting if you made um different number of rows then you just be consistent and you follow it and um oh i also discovered that um i might not have enough of this thread and when i went and looked for them in the Chinese shop I couldn't find anymore you know so I have actually bought um, one sec let me get it I bought the exact same thread that is in terms of the gauge it's also five to six millimeter and there you have it is this color you know so I'll probably be working the collar because they, it needs quite a bit of uh, yarn and I Parent, I'm not very sure whether it might actually turn out that I have enough but on the other hand I was thinking that being a raglan car, um, jacket you know this kind of a topper raglan sleeve um, jacket I think to emphasize the shape and construction of the sleeve it would actually be better for you to work it in one of the here you can work it for instance if you have uh, several colors if you're working the jacket of course if you're doing it a single tone jacket then you don't have to worry about the colors but in my case there are one two three four five six colors you know even seven you know because there are the colors tend to uh, they vary you know when they when they're starting to change from one color to the other there's actually another color also thrown in so you can actually pick one of these colors and then you make the sleeve that color so that way you can actually see how the sleeve joins onto the the jacket you know and perhaps it might emphasize the construction and make it look interesting i don't know i mean i'm just experimenting if it doesn't turn out very nice then i probably will have to redo it now i realized something else you know that i forgot to mention now if you are like for instance i told you earlier that i had done these decreases um, you know I had done them firstly after five and then four and then four and then three I realized that once in a while you might have this problem because you're going to do the decreases for the right maybe from here and the left front from this side if you find that your yarn is now on the opposite side of where you're going to do your decrease all you need to do okay now you see this yarn is on this side but your decrease has to be here so what you can do is that you just lift this when the decrease that you're supposed to do and put it here then of course you mark it on your now i like to use all the leftover pieces from uh, whatever printing so i don't waste you know so you put your second decrease now then you just work it normally as you would you know just continue knitting off
and when you reach here actually my thread is finishing I'm gonna have to join a new piece this will be your because on the fifth row you were supposed to do the decrease because I had done them on different um, I wasn't constant with my I didn't put them all after every four rows you know that's why I have this you see so now when you reach here you just lift the two over it and there you have you have worked your decrease Okay, I'm still in my pajamas, but <laughs> just wanted to show you all that I finished this. Okay, this is the back. These are the two fronts. And these are the two sleeves that I've done with the part where the saffron uh, bottom part of the sleeve. Now, I haven't really decided how to join this thing up, you know, because according to the picture that I looked at, I'm not actually quite certain how to join this thing up, you know. But um, the way that you join this is that you put the back piece here. Then you take one of the parts of the sleeve. Join it here. Now, I don't... The one, the diagram that I... Sorry, not the diagram. The picture that I saw, they actually join the sleeve all the way to the bottom, you know. But I think I don't want to do that. That would look like a bad, bad sleeve shrug, you know. Bad, bad sleeve shrug or something they call it, you know. Then you put the one part of the front here. You know, so the sleeve joins part of it to the front. This is the neckline, you know. This part here. This part here is the neck. Then, of course, the other front comes here. No, sorry. The other sleeve comes here and then the front again. This is how the whole thing is constructed. You join them up like this. I'll pin them up and come back and show you. Okay, I joined it all up. But then I think it is still very difficult for you to actually imagine how it will actually look, you know. In spite of the fact that I've joined it all up with pins. One sec. Let me try and make it into a actual garment. I don't know whether this helps. But you, as you can see, I have not joined the bottom part of the sleeve. And I won't be joining it, you know. Unlike the pattern that I took the inspiration for this design. That one actually joined it all the way here, you know. That means here like this, joined up. But I'm not going to do that. I'll leave it. Um, like a sleeve you know this part of it not joined to the body it will be left to each other the, the sleeve would join to each other now the rest of it as you can see this is the front what the front will have a knit to um, pearl to I'm afraid you're gonna have to do some knitting yeah, for this real knitting with knitting needles if you want to do this pattern but if you don't want to do and you want to do a crochet uh, front bands like I have done for the others, I don't think it will look as nice, to be very perfectly honest. Because this one, I think you will need to have the knit to pearl to ribbed uh, front band and the long corner collar that will reach up to here, you know, the collar. It's about 8 inches. It's a very long collar like that, you know, it folds over. And this is the other sleeve. I wonder whether you can see, let me try and look at it from above, maybe you can see it better, the construction. Can you see that? That's how it's going to look. Okay, now um, after I've joined, uh, this is how I, I showed you exactly how those, those two pieces here, this is the front, this is the sleeve here and then of course this is the back. The back piece now let's see if you can look at how it's been joined I've only put pins you know ah. okay, I'm 
camera stand fell. My phone camera stand. Okay there. Look at that. Hope you get an idea of how to join it up. I know it looks a bit complicated, you know, actually this this raglan uh, thing. But if you get it done, I think it would look quite remarkable. I have finished the seam for the back to the sleeve. Now you have to be very careful if you are doing this in one solid colour. Make sure that your seam doesn't look ugly, you know, because it's going to be very, very visible because of the decreases. So if you are if you're doing it, if you are doing this project in a single colour, try to perhaps look up on the way that you stitch this with a needle and thread because what I did was I'm sorry using the same yarn but using a tapestry needle instead of um, what I've done where it I have actually um, slip stitched you know now it, because I could afford to do the slip stitch because I'm using variegated yarn you see and so it's not really obvious the where the seam is the seam is actually here. This is where the seam is. You see, it's not even very visible, you know. See, it's sewn here. But you can't really see it because the color, the thread color is so um, colorful. You can't really do see the joining. But if you're going to do this in um, one single solid color, make sure that you make sure that your seams are well done. Otherwise, they will look quite... Um, horrible you know so be careful about that point yeah I mentioned that I was going to do a collar with uh, knit 2 pearl 2 however when I did it it looked like something out of the Louis the 14th French Revolution collars you know really stiff and quite horrible it didn't really look very nice I don't understand why the original pattern from which I took this inspiration from actually used that stitch because maybe it's their yarn but on my yarn it doesn't work it just stands up you know like like a cardboard collar sticking out you know so i changed the stitch and i did eight inches because remember i told you that the top part of the of the um, topper you're supposed to have an eight inch collar you know that is all along the neckline you know so i picked up the stitches now if you recall there were all together there were 10 stitches for the front 10 stitches uh, both fronts so there were 20 stitches here 18 for the back and uh, the sleeve you had another 14 and 14 you know so this added up to 66 but when you join them in every cavity that you join you have to pick up one stitch too you know otherwise it will look a bit odd there will be a hole and it won't be nice, you know, and it won't uh, fit properly like this flat, you know. So when you pick up the stitches, make sure that you add the four stitches where the joints are, you know, one, two, three and four, the, uh, the part here, the last joint. So you will have 70 stitches to pick up for the neck. Pick up and work a garter stitch with um, knitting needles. I used for this uh, particular yarn, the one that I was using, I used 6.5, um, 6.5 millimeter knitting needles to do garter stitch. Garter stitch is where you uh, knit every row, you know, back and forth, you knit, keep on knitting uh, the rows and you'll get a garter stitch, you know, and you do it for 8 inches. After you've done that, I also finished all the bottom part. I did my uh, three rows of uh, single crochet here, two rows of single crochet for the sleeves. So all this I have finished, you know. And now I am working on the left and front and also the right front. Here you have to do a two inch front, a border, you know, um, the band that comes in the front of the uh, left and right front. You do it all the way hang on eh? show you you do it from the end here and you do it all the way and you work it up to the end of the collar here the for two inches you work what I've chosen is the this stitch here is called the modified half double crochet 
you can um, I can show you how to do it I'll show it to you in a moment this is the modified half double crochet I will work this for two inches and that will be the front two front bands will have this modified half double crochet and that will be the uh, finish that that will uh, finish the the topper this cardigan topper this is the modified half double crochet what you do is you yarn over then you put it into the space that you're going to work you take a, a hook a, a yarn over again and pass it through the one that you just yarned over then yarn over one more time and pass it through both it gives this kind of a look it looks a little bit like garter stitch you know so it's the crochet version of a garter stitch although it's not exactly like garter stitch show that again yarn over then put it in through the the stitch that you're working pull the thread through oh through that and the one that you yarned over earlier bit of a difficulty then pick up yarn over again and move it through both again yarn over yarn over there you go hope you got that 